In this video, we'll look at whether AlBr3, that's aluminum bromide, is ionic or covalent. So there's a few ways we can do this. First, we can look at aluminum and the bromine and see if they're metals or nonmetals. Aluminum right here, that's a metal, and bromine, that's a nonmetal. When we have a metal and a nonmetal, we're thinking that it's ionic, that we'll have an ionic compound, or at least have a significant degree of ionic character. So at this point, we're thinking it might be ionic. We could also look at the difference in electronegativity between the aluminum and bromine atoms. So here's aluminum, 1.5, and bromine, 2.8. So 2.8 minus 1.5, that gives us a 1.3. That's the difference in electronegativity between the aluminum and bromine bonds. So on this chart here, we can see nonpolar down here, zero, and then ionic up on this end. So 1.3, that's about right here. So aluminum bromide, we would put that to be polar covalent with a significant degree of ionic character. And when we say polar, we're talking about the aluminum and bromine bond. There are three of those. If you're interested in whether the whole molecule, the whole molecule AlBr3 is polar, there's a link at the end of this video to help you do that. Let's look at one last consideration as to whether this is ionic or covalent. So these general rules here, these are called Fion's rules, can help you figure this out as well. Aluminum, that's aluminum 3 plus, so we have a high positive charge, and the aluminum cation, that Al3 plus ion, it's pretty small. The bromide ion, it's kind of large, so all three of these conditions are satisfied, and that helps us be sure that we have a covalent compound. This is Dr. B answering the question whether AlBr3 is ionic or covalent. It is covalent, and the bonds between the aluminum and bromine atoms, they would be polar covalent. Thanks for watching.